Howdy everyone, this is Gamers and Unicorn. I am Derek, aka Drotch, and today I'll be going over some commonly referred to terms, as well as some basic ones, that you'll be encountering in your D&D sessions. I'll be giving you a quick rundown so you don't look like a noob at your table. I would like to start by saying something that should be a common theme in my D&D videos. D&D, like most tabletop role-playing games, is flexible and open to interpretation. So ask your DM if anything seems to conflict with their game. Just know that I am right and they're playing it wrong. But really, it all just comes down to how you all have fun playing it. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Ability scores. These are the base stats that make up your character, which are used to determine whether or not you can overcome a challenge. You add your ability modifier to appropriate roles when asked to. Strength, or STR, uses physical might to accomplish your task, like lifting an iron gate or chucking a gnome for great distance. That's gotta be at least a 30 foot wall. Bet you I could chuck the half pine over it. Dexterity, or Dex, D E X, uses your nimbleness and agility to get things done, like sneaking past a guard or pocketing that valuable jewel without anyone noticing. I'd just sneak past the guard and lure a rope down. That way I'd make much less of a sit, or we'll just do that. Constitution, or con, C O N. This is part of your hit points. It also helps you keep your spells up whenever you take damage. And side note, it also helps you keep things like your lunch from coming up when you drink a little too much. Have any of you seen me flask? I swear I had it just a moment of... Wait, what are you doing? No, no, put me down. No, not again. Intelligence or int, I-N-T. Some say that the mind is the sharpest weapon of them all. These people are spellcasters, mostly a couple of classes, as well as some subclasses. But we all know that intelligence is mostly used to say, um, actually, if we don't deactivate the traps that I read about around this ruin, we might not make the climb safely. Let me look for them. Wisdom or wits, W-I-S. This is the difference between knowing things and knowing how to use them. From finding a safe path to reading others, subtle tells. Well, you look around for clues, I'm gonna go search the area for danger and maybe find a safer way up. Also, was I really the only one that found the shopkeep that gave us this quest to be a little odd? Charisma, or chur, C-H-R, uses your words and charm to win the day. Lying is second nature to you. And manipulating the situation, your advantage is just what you do. After I persuaded them to give us an advance, I see no harm in helping them get what they want. So I see no harm in going up to those gods over there and seeing if I can't get backstage. Ability checks. Using the previous scores, you then roll a 20-sided die and add any modifier you may have. Pretty much, if it's not an attack or save you are asked to roll, it's most likely an ability check. Action economy. You get a main action, bonus action, a free action, and a movement action. Your main action can be used to attack, cast a spell, dash, doubling your movement speed for that round, disengaging, allowing you to move without being attacked, dodging, allowing you to be harder to hit, which means they must roll Two dice, because they have disadvantage, we'll go over that later. Help, you give advantage to someone else's roll. Hide, you become out of sight, out of mind. Ready, you plan to do something specific if something you planned for in advance happens. Search, you look for something. Or use an object that has special requirements. Bonus actions can be used and specifically stated for an attack, spell, or other action, but not as another main action. Free actions are anywhere from item interactions like pushing a button or pulling a lever, 
to picking an item up as you run by. Movement actions are for getting around, generally 25 to 30 feet from where you are, but can be increased by feats and traits. Uh, that would be the five to six squares, as most maps are built around the five foot per square system. Advantage. You can get advantage from many sources that we can go over in another video, but what you need to know is you want it when you can get it. It gives you two 20 sided dice that you can roll at the same time and use the better result of it. Alignments. An old system for explaining why your character is its own unique form of insufferable idiot with no depth. Mostly used for memes and some other stuff that hardly ever comes up. Area of Effect, or AoE for short. When a spell or ability affects an area and not just one creature or object, it can be a cube, cone, cylinder, sphere, or a line, and can get interesting when the wizard doesn't know the difference and sets the whole party on fire. Armor Class, or AC. How good you or another are at avoiding blows and is normally a combination of natural abilities, mostly dex, armor, terrain, magical items, uh, although if you get it too high, your dungeon master will target one of your weak saves anyway. Attack roll. This is what is rolled against armor class to see if it hits. Remember this, if it meets, it beats, in most cases and is normally a d20 roll with your ability modifier, proficiency, uh, weapons, and magic items that help make that roll. Attack of Opportunity. You or your opponent get to use a reaction, get one per turn, to attack a creature that is attempting to run away from you or past you. These are generally made with a melee attack unless you have something that says specifically otherwise. BBEG, the big bad evil guy. He's the main antagonist to the party, city, or world that you're campaigning in. Bloodied, a term from previous editions that indicates when a creature or player is at or below half their maximum hit points. Buff, a beneficial spell or ability that increases your stats normally over some time. A debuff is the opposite. Criticals. When that d20 pops on the dice and everyone at the table collectively cheers or groans, depending on who got it and why. I attack the beast. Roll an attack. Nat 20. Yay! I'd like to seduce the demon. Uh, okay, roll. Charisma? Nat 20. Ugh. You are taken back to the abyss by the demon and must re-roll a new character with better common sense. Yay! Classes. Your role in the party and how you go about doing what you do. From stabbing with a weapon to blasting with spells. Or seducing with the words. The class you pick can help guide you to how you want to play the game, but it should never limit you. The combat round. Starting at the top and going down the initiative order until everyone gets their turn. This happens over the course of six seconds of in-game time. Concentration. If you are attacked while trying to maintain a spell with the concentration tag, you must roll a con save to see if you can keep the spell from failing. Components. Certain spells require your character to either speak words, verbal or V, perform gestures, somatic or S, or produce an object to cast it, material or M. Most require some combination of two or all three. If a material has a cost associated with it, you will need to get that item in order to cast that spell. As an arcane focus, a component pouch, or a holy symbol will not substitute for that particular item like it does with items that do not have a cost associated with them. Also, if it says it consumes that material, you 
have to get more of that item before you can recast that spell. And now for the dice. A d4 is a small pyramid shaped die, mostly used for magic missile, healing spells, small weapons, and as a caltrop for someone you really don't like. The d6, a six sided die that is the most common die you've probably ever seen. These were used to roll stats with 3d6, but later the practice turned to 46 and dropped the lowest. 46 means you roll four of them. The d8, an eight sided die that looks like you took two four sided die and stuck them together. And along with the d6, is one of the most common damage die you will be throwing in the game, as well as health rolls. The d10, a 10 sided die that is mostly used for the higher damage rolls, as well as most of the front line characters' HP. It is also part of the d100 when figuring out percentiles. The d12, a 12 sided die that's a barbarian's best friend. Used on very few weapons and spells, and only one class's HP pool. You'll mostly see this thing creep out of hiding when someone wants to swing a big axe or with some bolts. The d20. Mostly used for attack rolls, saving throws, and most everything you'll be doing in Dungeons & Dragons. It'll either be your best friend, or resolve itself to dice jail where you will burn it with a torch and scream obscenities at it. The d100. Now, they do make actual D100s, they're full 100-sided dice. I'd never recommend using those, they're too much of a pain to use. But right here, we have two 10-sided dice. One with 1 through 0, and the other one with 10 through double zero. With these, you'll be able to determine random encounters like... Will the item you're looking for be in the shop? Will you run into bandits? What will the day be like? What kind of wild magic is going to screw the whole party over next? Find out the exciting answers to these and more with Percentile Die. And a little side note to help you figure these out. The ones right here represent, of course, in the ones column, whereas these over here represent in the hundreds. If you roll a double zero and a six on this one, you end up having the result of six. But if you roll a double zero, and a zero, that's how you get your hundred. Damage rolls, or DMG. When you make a hit or are hit, a damage roll will be made. Look at the weapon or spell to know which dice to use. Make sure to add any modifiers that apply, like the ability modifier used, magic item bonus, or other special features. DMG can also refer to the Dungeon Master's Guide, whereas DHB can refer to the Player's Handbook. The DM, or Dungeon Master. This is the person who will be describing each scene, controlling all the NPCs you'll encounter, and asking you when to roll. They control the game and take a large amount of time to plan it, so show some appreciation by listening, rolling only when asked, and bringing tasty snacks. Beats, or features. These mostly pertain to racial or class features that you will get either at the beginning or by leveling up and allow you to do many things. But when people say feats, they're normally talking about the feats you can optionally get based on your DM instead of ASI, which are ability score improvements you get at certain levels depending on your class and are a fun way to customize your character. Hit die. Whenever you take a short rest, you can roll these to heal your character. They are replenished after a long rest. The hit die you can use is based off of your class. Hit points, or HP. You have a pool of them based on your class and con, and you never want to have zero of them left. Initiative. Determines the order in combat. Usually involves rolling a d20 and adding your dexterity modifier, though there are ways of increasing it. Instantaneous. This means the spell is cast and dissipates before the 6 second combat round would end, making it impossible to dispel. But counterspell still works. Long rest. A period in which at least 8 hours of restful activity has occurred. 
for the most part, sleep. Sure, you can keep watching shifts, but where's the fun in that? Modifiers. A number you add to your rolls. Whether it be an ability check, attack roll, damage roll, etc. NPCs, or non-player characters. These are the people you would find running into walls in video games because they missed the door. But now, with the DM assuming direct control over them for better or worse. Passive proficiency. These aren't used by most DMs, but are a way of making quick checks without rolls by taking an average 10 and then adding modifiers to it. This is 5e's replacement for the taking 10 and 20 system from previous editions, where you would take 10, but it took 10 times longer to complete the task, or you took 20 and it took a large chunk of time to finish. Now, I can understand most DM's reason for not taking this system because of the fact that it warrants more lazy play with people just going, well, my passive perception would have caught that instead of actually actively looking. A lot of DMs will take and um, mash this together into a little bit of a homebrew where if you say you're looking and want to use your, your passive perception instead of actively rolling, they'll allow it. Which, that just makes it a little bit more fair and a little bit more fun as you're not just automatically finding everything with your passive perception of 20-something. PCs, or player characters. The members of the party. You. Your friends, your frenemies, or David from down the street who had the hookup on pizza and soda. Mostly, anyone the DM isn't playing. Proficiencies. These will be determined by many factors, like race, background, class, etc. Uh, they add a bonus to your roles, if you have them, based off your level. If for some reason you have expertise, that doubles the proficiency bonus. Race. Now with the new added heritage system, this mostly makes up where you come from, how pointy your ears are, you have some kind of skin condition, a growth problem, or how hairy your feet are. Range. How far a spell or attack can travel. For example, 60 feet means you can attack up to 60 feet away. 5 feet, or touch, means they'd have to be right next to you. And 150 slash 600 feet would mean that you could attack normally without any penalties at 150 feet. But uh, anywhere from that up to 600, you would attack at disadvantage, which means you roll 2d20 and take the lower result. Reactions. When you act on a turn other than yours, you get to use one of these per combat round unless otherwise specified. And if you're holding an action, you use this to enact it. Saving throws. Your DM will let you know when to roll these, but it's usually to avoid something harmful. You'll roll a d20 and add any corresponding ability modifier. Short rest. At least an hour of restful activity. Let's the party roll, hit dice, and regain some features or spells depending on your class. Uh, Gives you some time to take a breath, but don't think it can't be interrupted when you're in the middle of a dungeon. Speed. How fast your character can move each round. Five foot equals a single square on most battle maps, but it can change on overworld maps or special encounters. Spell casting ability. This is what your class uses to cast its spells. Know it. And your spell save DC by writing it down, as it will come up a lot for Spellcaster. Spellcasting DC, what you or someone else would roll against to avoid the effects of a spell placed upon them. Roll a d20, plus the spell save DC modifier, and any other applicable modifier. Spell slots. The number of times you can cast certain levels of spells. Say you have three level 1 slots and two level 2 slots. You can either cast five level 1 slots, upcasting the two level 2 slots, making them more potent. Or you can cast three level 1s 
and two level two spells. Cantrips don't count against the spell slots, and you get all spell slots back after a long rest unless otherwise specified, like warlocks getting their very limited number of spell slots back on a short rest. Oh boy, there were far too many to list them all, but hopefully this gets you started. If you feel like I missed something, or you have something you'd like to add, feel free to comment down below. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more like it, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll be the first ones to know when we got new content going live. That's all for now, but make sure to come back next week when we go over character creation. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends. Oh my gosh, I am so tired.